And the answer is we can use Le Hapatol's rule for those limits. So more specifically, what Le Hapatol's rule is, it says that if h of x equals f of x over g of x, and either one of these two scenarios happens, either the limit as x approaches a of f of x is zero, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is zero, meaning if we do a direct substitution, we're gonna have that zero over zero format, or limit as x approaches a of f of x is plus or minus infinity, and limit as x approaches a of g of x is plus or minus infinity, we're gonna have that plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity format, then this is uh, what L'Hopital's rule is. Basically, what we can do is we could take that limit that limit is going to equal the limit as x approaches a of the derivative of f over the derivative of g. Now, certain profs, certain textbooks, they may have a different definition. Some definitions may be more technical than this, like they might write that this limit here has to exist. They might write that the limit as x approaches a of g prime x cannot equal zero. So you got to adjust accordingly. But this is basically it. And I'm going to show you how it works with all four of these limits, actually. So check this out. If we take the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, we already know that this limit is going to equal 4. I showed that with factoring earlier. But what if we apply Le Hapitol's rule? And notice we can apply it because it's in that indeterminate form. The limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 is 0 and the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 is 0 as well. So notice that we're here, and what we can do is we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 2. We could take the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 2x, over the derivative of the denominator, which is just going to be 1. And so notice that we end up with the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x. And notice we could just do a direct substitution there, and that's going to give us 4. Right? So a lot easier than factoring, at least in my opinion. Right? We just had to derive the numerator and the denominator. We end up getting 2x over 1, which is just 2x. And now we could just sub in 2 for x, which is going to end up being 4. Right? So that's another way. That's how we use the Hoppe-Tools rule to get that 4 in a different way than factoring. Now what about the next one? We got the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus 3x over 2x plus 1. So we already know this is going to be negative 3 over 2. We use a different tool, but what if we use Le Hapitol's rule? Well, it's negative infinity over positive infinity. It's in that indeterminate form. So let's take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the numerator is just going to be negative 3. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3 over the derivative of 2x plus 1 is just 2. And notice that here we got the limit as x approaches infinity of a constant. And if you remember properties of limits, if we got the limit as x approaches a of some kind of constant, this a could be anything, well it's just going to equal that constant. So from here, the answer is just negative 3 over 2, which is the same thing we got when we uh, use that other method for dealing with limits at infinity. Right? So just another way to get that same answer. Now, let's move on to these more complex limits, ones that we didn't have previous tools for. But fortunately, now that we have this new tool, we can actually apply Le Hapitol's rule to both of these. So notice we got the limit as x approaches 0, 5 to the x minus 2 to the x over x. So notice that it's in that 0 over 0 format. So what we can do here, take the derivative of the numerator. Now notice it's two exponential functions that are subtracting. And if you remember, if we got an exponential function like that, what's the derivative of this going to be? If you remember from derivatives of exponential functions, it's going to be that exponential function times ln of that base. Right? So the derivative of 5 to the x using that, it's going to be 5 to the x 
times ln of 5 minus, what's the derivative of 2 to the x going to be? It's going to be 2 to the x times ln of 2. All over the derivative of x, that's just 1. And then notice from here, what we can do now is directly substitute. We have a 1 in the denominator. So we don't even have to write that. And then notice here, we can just directly substitute 0 for x, 0 for x. We would end up with 1, 5 to the power of 0 is 1, times ln 5, which is just ln 5. Let's keep it as an exact value. Minus 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, times ln 2, just ln 2. Like that. And so that there ends up being the answer for this limit here. It's basically ln of 5 minus ln of 2. And actually another way to write this is ln of 5 over 2. If you remember using logarithmic rules, so either ln 5 minus ln 2 or ln of 5 over 2, that's the answer for that limit right there. Now let's do the fourth limit. We got the limit as x approaches infinity of ln x over ln x squared. So notice, as I mentioned before, if we do a direct substitution, we'd end up with infinity over infinity. I'm just going to be in this form. That's going to be that scenario. So let's try to use La Hopital's rule on this. So we got the limit as x approaches infinity. And we would take the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of ln x? It's 1 over x. So in a lot of these questions, you got to make sure you're solid with all your derivative tools. And that's why La Hopital's rule, it actually comes after we talk about all of those derivative sections because a lot of those sections are going to come back and be used in this section. So it's combining derivatives and limits. So the limit of ln x is 1 over x. What's the limit of ln x squared going to be? Well, it's going to be 1 over x squared times the derivative. We've got to use a chain rule of that, which is going to be 2x. Okay, so what you'll end up with here, we'll have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x all over. Notice that this 2x over x squared, this x and one of these x's will cancel out, so we'd be left with 2 over x here. And so notice we got a fraction divided by another fraction. So we'd have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x times the reciprocal of this, x over 2. Notice those x's cancel out. So we're just left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 2. And the limit as x approaches anything of a constant, it's just equal to that constant. So the answer to this limit is 1 over 2. Right, so two examples of limits where we didn't really have tools yet to solve them, but now with La Hopital's rule, because they were both in indeterminate formats, we were able to solve them. Right, so now what we're going to do in this entire section is just go over a bunch of examples. And as I mentioned, Later on in this section, I'm going to bring in more indeterminate formats. So just as a review, the two that we went over, which are the two most popular ones, is 0 over 0, and then plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. And actually, another thing I want to mention is that you can't mix these here. So for example, you can't have plus or minus infinity over 0, or 0 over plus or minus infinity. These are not indeterminate formats. It's got to be 0 over 0, or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. That's why these two scenarios here, they are separated, they're not mixed. So it's either this scenario or it's this scenario here, right? These two are the two main indeterminate formats. So the next few examples, what we're gonna be doing is going over limits with these formats. And then after, I'm going to introduce some other indeterminate formats as well.